Yeah, so Holy Spider asks the dramatic question, how many murders would you be able to commit before somebody says something? Um, the movie is a 2022 film from Iranian director Ali Abbasi and details the real life story of a serial killer in Iran from 2000 to 2001 who specifically targeted sex workers and the investigation and the trial that ensues from that. It's a tale of rampant misogyny, um, religious fervor, f pigs being pigs, f men being men all through the lens of an especially conservative, religious Iranian culture. I don't want to make it out like uh, this is a read on Iran. That's really not my place. I don't really know Iranian culture enough to say so. But um, if anything, you could watch this movie and say, this is a read on the U.S. in a lot of ways. And maybe if you watch it, you'll find some pertinent connections to U.S. society today. Who knows? Anyways, yeah. Let's watch Holy Spider and find out just how many murders you can get away with, as long as it's the right type of victim. <laughs> Ali Abbasi. I always wonder at like Middle Eastern or Iranian actresses kind of like bearing their naked body or even their head in like film depictions but you know i'm sure the same conventions of conservatism that we kind of assign or designate to iranian films and to iranian culture uh the same could be said in american settings and american films just because you know shailene woodley or brie larson can show their breasts in like white bird in a blizzard or in the Spect spectacular now uh, doesn't mean that they always will or should or be allowed to um, in more commercial ventures and like, I don't know, Captain Marvel or something. And we can already kind of see with like the many bruises that she gets, the kind of hostility with which her client speaks to her that uh, there is a evasiveness of misogyny or at least hostility towards women um or at least hostility to women what the fuck am i talking about hostility towards women and uh violence towards women but yeah and they do have do be having crack though in iran i really like kind of like the metallic bent to the sound design it's really kind of capturing the uh groaning like frayed um, splintering, rusty aspects of the city. The way that cars, like, oh, that's a full on dick. The way that cars groan across bridges. This is really inter interesting interaction with like uh, metallic elements or mechanical elements in this movie. I, I want to see if it explores it further, but there's a like kind of like a like compounded threat or compounded metaphor that the men in this movie are associated with um, with vehicles, with machinery. It's also a remark made in an earlier film covered on this channel, Iranian film covered in this channel, Brick and Mirror, that neighbors are always watching, that this is a surveillance-based society, that people are always kind of like judging or um, digging into their neighbors' um, dirt. Trust that intuition, girl. Get out of there. showing her teeth too as she dies. That's such a kind of sad depiction. And strangulation being one of the more powerful, like, dominant male signifiers. Just like an absolutely horrific way to kill somebody and to die. But a way of asserting dominance, of asserting um, physical power. And the uh, cloak that's used, the sari that's used to, uh, like, cover her. It's like a an extension that this... Um, this society has already like created such a 
an atmosphere of, of stripping women of their identity and their invisibility, and it's just further extended now that the sari that he gave to her is now you being used to uh, cloak her body entirely after she's died. The, oh, um, fuck. The Chador. Chador, Chador, Chador. شرمنده خانم اونست که یک مشکلی تو سیستم ما پیش اومده شرمنده تانم ولی اصلا ما پره بمیشم Yeah, the movie is like extending this metaphor of violence against women to kind of display an overall kind of um, cultural or systemic oppression of women. That there's already a suspicion of this woman that she's that she's a sex worker because she's booking a hotel room for herself. Gay woman's uniform. I love this idea of the kind of um, mythologizing of a killer. It's, you know, we've got it for the fucking Joker these days too, but the idea that these are supernatural human beings unable to be like understood or captured within the system, it's kind of lionizing them to a certain degree. And her stance in opposition to this is that he's very categorical, like, he's very identifiable, he has regular traits, he has regular proclivities, and those things will be, can be used to categorize him and to find him. Why? So is Mashhad uh, like um, a particularly conservative city within the realm of Iran? Said. So yeah, apparently this is based on real life serial killer Saeed Hanai. Hanai. ببینین آقای رسایی من قصد انتقاد ندارم ها ولی با وجود این قتلا که هر روز داره تعدادش بیشتر میشه چطوره که شما هنوز هر روز داره Because I secretly agree with the methodology منم افسر این پروندم I wonder how they're going to repeat this idea over and over again um, of Rahimi being on like the wrong side of a desk that she's always going to face like a kind of like a patriarchal or a hierarchical like a man in a position of power and how she's going to have to negotiate that, those boundaries, the boundaries of the desk. So in the first case with um, the uh, hotel clerk, she had to assert her dominance and then here she's trying to control the police chief. I mean, that is beautiful, really. The works of art, the works of worship are truly a sight to behold. It's just a fucking shame that they instill so many fucking toxic values into people. So I'm guessing the um, ring on his pinky is like a religious ring. Oh wow. Oh no. میدونم که برای چه اون چادر رو سرتون کردید. من میدونم که شما از ما روحانی اون خوشتون نمیاد. شما فکر میکنید که نظام فاسده اما نیست. در چشم خداوند عالم هر زندگی مقدس. پس شما فکر نمیکنید که این زن آقای قمرگ that's good that she doesn't like directly respond to him like as a journalist her job is to uh, get as great a response out of him as possible so you think that she's going to challenge him but instead she kind of like allows him enough rope to hang himself on it's such an interesting wording a religious recommendation as opposed to a command is that supposed to be like you know comforting and of course, um, establishing another kind of visual theme, uh, the association, <laughs> the association of um, Hanayi with um, with carpets, with tapestry, is kind of like uh, signifying his religious fervor. <laughs> Again, 
It's true. There's no one individual, no group that's being targeted by this kind of crime. It permeates outwards. It affects the entire society. I mean, obviously, there is one group that's being specifically targeted and is the victim. But in terms of impact, everybody is affected by these things and not positively impacted. Everybody is negatively impacted by this. <laughs> I mean, yes. Okay, so I understand better. Mashhad is a um, is a pilgrimage destination that um, the Amman Reza is a religious site, uh, like at the center of the uh, Muslim world. That that makes a lot of sense, and also kind of like economically. To tie in with the kind of sound design and the um, atmosphere of the movie. It's the one of the largest automobile producers in Iran. So there is this kind of like interaction with this idea of transience of people making pilgrimages in and out of this city um, with uh, transportation, with automobiles, and um, women, women who are in a lower economic status, um, kind of like because it's such a hub because there's so much like um, so many people moving in and out they utilize this as a, a, a place to um, garner clients despite this being like a religious pilgrimage with the uh, kind of like influx of men coming in and out of this city um, Correlatively, there would be a rise in like sex workers in the city as well it's such an interesting that's such a cool kind of um crisis or point of interest in this film that this is a like a religious mecca and it, it also creates this kind of like cottage culture of drugs of sex work and uh this kind of like byproduct of like institutional or cultural kind of like intensified misogyny it's a really really interesting kind of observation we have like similar kind of portrayals or um, ideologies presented in American movies as well this is obviously a, one of like the clearest stated depictions of Hollywood as well that the proximity to wealth to status and to celebrity and the people who wish to claim it creates this atmosphere in which women go to pursue a dream and then realize like the nightmare of America of Hollywood the the nightmare of Hollywood and of America by extension and you have a lot of like dead sex worker narratives around Hollywood or around California as well <laughs> I kind of also like this depiction of Hani as um, Hanai as um, not like particularly strong or robust that he can't even chase down his son. That um, this act of murder is an act of, is an act of um, asserting control and asserting dominance. That in his real life he's you know kind of impotent or ineffectual, and he needs to dominate very very weak very susceptible vulnerable women as a result to feel powerful again he really feels a compulsion now i mean this is not a religious fatwa he is clearly doing this for like psycho to meet a psychological need a compulsion I worry whenever they eat stuff here in this movie. There's this weird kind of um, story that's being told in the women with their teeth. <laughs> women with their teeth and their hair. What is this tea? I mean, I, I guess it's perhaps tied into the drug usage in the film as well. But it's very, very corporeal. There's a lot of kind of attention paid to these women's faces and to their heads. And obviously they die through asphyxiation as well. <laughs> Jesus, these actresses go full out. And her dead body along the carpet. 
It's a really interesting association because, like, I would argue in the presentation of this character, he's not really murdering these women for, you know, religious reasons, but he he does make the religious justification post hoc. Jesus. Is, is that a picture of a dead woman? Is that this sex sex worker? Her her like strangulated face in a carpet? Serial killers need to get laid too. In front of my salad, in front of my dead sex worker, you go have sex with your wife. After you've strangled me to death. Don't, don't enjoy it more. That's weird. He's there? This motherfucker is there? But like, more so than I would expect in a movie, this movie has a very corporeal presentation of the women. We get to see the women's kind of like, physical actions and physical reactions a lot more than the men in my opinion so far we get to see like rahimi like sweat and vomit we see women's lipstick we see their bruises we see their teeth straining against food oh she hella gay <laughs> this is the complication of giving him the cigarettes that's how he's going to continue on this relationship yeah, this is kind of the danger of forming, like, the partnership with these men. And you kind of wonder if it's going to happen with her and her reporter friend as well. But that, um, you know, she gives them an inch, they take a mile. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. There's still a man underneath. Ah! Yeah, and women vomiting a lot in this movie as well. It's a really interesting presentation. But yeah, I mean, top to bottom, patriarchy doesn't seem like the greatest. I love that depiction of her um, thinning hair. So she was aware that the killer was riding a motorbike this entire time, maybe from her interaction with the other sex worker, and she gave that information to her daughter. But this is an interesting kind of like network of information. Like the women have one network of information that they're privy to that they know, and the men have another, and... It's, it's interesting. You think that they're kind of like bifurcated, that the women have the knowledge and the men don't. But to a certain degree, the men have the knowledge as well. Um, they are just not acknowledging it. In a certain way, the women aren't acknowledging it either. So it's like a huge conspiracy, but it's not a conspiracy of... Um, it's not a conspiracy to do something. It's not an agreement to do something, it's an agreement to ignore something, which is a far easier and in some ways a more sinister conspiracy. No. That's our poster. Again with the eating. It's also interesting, um, oh is he gonna stab her? Cause like, he could just strangle her, but it's almost like he doesn't want to actually touch that, touch them, and that's why he uses the um, the headscarf. <laughs> yeah, I love this depiction of him not really being physically imposing. I mean, use one of your towels. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> And this has become much, much more um, messy than he ever wanted it to be. He likes to distance himself from the actual act and keep it as clean as possible and as like wrapped up as possible. And now it's become 
bloody and turgid and viscous. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So, is this modus operandi going to evolve from this point? He's like afraid of physical contact before, and now he's going to... His, his process is going to intensify. This is one of those things where if you sit on a grand jury, um, you come to realize that um, police, law enforcement, have a very, very long bead on people who are going to commit crimes. Like, there's a very long paper trail that they try and establish, and they wait on it. They sit on it forever because they want to gather enough evidence for a conviction. But these crimes, depending on what they are, can last weeks, months, years, and law enforcement won't do anything about it until they have enough evidence to convict I don't know, I've sat on a grand jury before, and it's just weird uh, what crimes get addressed in an hour and what crimes get addressed in months or years. Uh, they're very specific in the ones that they target for after only a couple of hours, I'll say. Um... It's kind of like superficial similarities, but I, something I want to talk about is this does feel... Oh, there he is again. It, it does feel like um, Zodiac to me. And not... Well, I mean, there are the superficial similarities, but also there are interesting interactions between how different... In, in both narratives, how both... Um, how different institutions kind of like address or try and um, investigate this crisis. But, you know, both are both based on uh, real-life crimes. Both kind of feature a heavily industrialized, spooky sound design to them. Both are also about, like, the interaction of um, a city or a populace with its, um, its automotive community. Uh, that's, like, a undercurrent of a lot of Zodiac is that um, it's a lot about kind of driving and vehicular crimes and crimes in proximity to vehicles. But also the ways that institutions, whether through um, malfeasance, whether through negligence, or whether through um, uh -huh. like outright malicious intent, um, let these crimes kind of develop or... Um, or metastasize far further than they ever should. And they both kind of feature like a, a lone wolf, who's also a reporter or investigator, who's trying to like circumvent the institutions, the institutional rot. And a killer who isn't like particularly special, but who is media obsessed. Um, a killer who doesn't necessarily get away with it because they're a genius or because they've planned everything out or because they're uh, superhuman, but because they fit into they fit perfectly into the right kind of cracks that these is larger institutions have that um they can't um that allow them to um slip in and out unseen even if people on the street kind of are able to identify them uh they don't have like the institutional backing the power to kind of certify their intu their intuitions or their um, suspicions. It's fucking brazen of this guy to do this right in his own home. That's hilarious that she, he uses the same plea that the first sex worker used with him. That she pleaded for her life saying that she has children and he pleads for his innocence uh, by saying that he has a wife and kids. <laughs> Oh, dude, you are not good at this at all. 
I understand. He's stressed. He's not as he's not a super villain. He's not processing this properly. The dude's gonna get himself caught. Yeah. Fuckface is a baby. It's interesting the perspective they've put on Ali in this. I think it's just like humanizing um, Saeed a little bit, but we are given a lot of perspective on Ali throughout this movie. And I wonder if it's like leading towards a conclusion, because I, I, I don't really think Ali is like narratively important to the movie, but um, I'm wondering if it's leading to a conclusion of how we're supposed to view the uh, story in terms of the cycle, the passing down of values and how Saeed or how Ali will view the narrative of his father. Yeah, so this is the story we're telling with Ali, uh, what is being passed down by these parents to their children, how this kind of misogyny is recertified over and over again in order to preserve a... Um, like a stable household, a stable imagery of masculinity, of patriarchy. Yeah, the entire community is kind of like uh, closing ranks around this family. Even if they know that the, the husband, the father did something wrong, or they, they know what his crime is, um, to a certain extent, they, va they validate his crime. They feel that he's done more for the community than bad. He's done more good for the community than bad. شما کجا بودی وقتی زوجت کشته شد؟ تو زندان بودم جناب قاضی. جرم چی بود؟ توزیع مواد مخدر. I mean this is a good case study for fucking America. The way we view criminals, the way we we view certain crimes is like um, reinforcing or degrading our cultural values. Like similarly in our society, drugs are like somehow a huge huge offense. Sex work is a huge huge offense. Wage theft is seen as par for the course. Violence against women is seen as a um, as overstepping the bounds of the privacy of uh, the marriage between a man and a woman. Why did he have to play the hero? They like legitimately view this as a heroic act. That's fucking nasty. Jesus. I like how they view this all as like political machinations. Dude murdered people. I love how increasingly conservative <laughs> Fatima's uh, Chador becomes, that she's shown in like her home garb, her domestic garb, for most of uh, most of the movie, the first half of the movie, shown with her hair and having sex and stuff, and while she's trying to build this narrative of her husband's innocence, she just covers up more and more. <laughs> Did this shit really happen? That's crazy. People are fucking crazy. Okay, this is good. Trying to break down the the difference of this being a religious experience and this being a pleasurable or compulsive experience. Why would he need to kill her? She hasn't done anything. He's a weird dude. He's a weird dude. I wish they hadn't focused so much on his psychology at the tail end of this movie. It is, like, interesting to explore, but I really would like a wider lens on this, just for my personal taste, about... <clears throat> how the institutions like are decided to convict him decided to punish him and because that like is for me leaving a narrative or thematic thread uh hanging that this institution or this um regime that tacitly condoned his actions is now is now washing their hands clean of it I'm not saying he should die, but I do like the return of this narrative thread or this thematic thread that in the end he's he's weak, that he's had this mega mega maniacal episode. 
at the end, he has to come crashing back into reality. And, oh, there goes gravity. And I get also that there's, like, a narrative satisfaction in him dying in the same way that he perpetrated all those murders. But I don't think his, you know, his death doesn't mean anything. This society still has its problems. And it's not been improved by killing him. Is she going to listen to herself be attacked? That would be really fucked up. Oh, okay. She's just going over the court uh, interviews. Yeah, and like I said, we end this on Ali. از وقتی که دستگیر شده ده بیس نفر از ما خواستن که کار بابام ادامه بدم بابام در نرسه وقت میکرده کلیدم برمش بعد یکم پول که مداده به طرف yeah. Social disease. It doesn't affect just one person, although there is like, uh, there's one specific victim, but it affects everybody. It poisons everybody. Yeah. It's a scary, scary ending. And this one event, this one um, instance, has been blown into mythic proportions. It's been made more powerful, more forceful, more more emblematic than it had been before. What was once a strangulation, um, a very soft assertion of dominance in a public sphere, has become this kneeling over a woman, this... A uh, completely overwhelming show of force. It's a good ending. Terrifying. Cool. This is a nice movie. I, I enjoyed it. I um, Certainly comparisons can be drawn to uh, Zodiac, to In Cold Blood. I don't know if you know everybody feels the same way that I do about Zodiac. But from my point of view, Zodiac isn't necessarily about a killer, isn't necessarily about um, the incompetence of the police or the uh, mythic energy of investigative reporters or anything. It is, like I think, associatively about all those things. But uh, to my mind, uh, what Zodiac is about is, is viewing an act of murder as patient zero in an outbreak. It's about a sociological disease, and you see how the... Outbreak spreads by media coverage, by police incompetence, or by systemic rot, or by institutional rot, or um, sensationalization in the press. And you see how this disease like overtakes an entire community, and uh, it infects them, and it changes their disposition. It changes their um, the entire kind of public outlook. And ostensibly, in an outbreak, you know people. It eventually passes. There's herd immunity. Uh, people become immunized to it, but there are some people that become like um, that retain like long-term effects of it. Um, that that have like a, a a chronic illness as a result of it. And those are people like um, Toski and uh, especially uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, uh, Robert Graysmith, becomes um, a symptomatic carrier or. He's kind of symptomatic, but they carry on the disease of this um, event for the rest of their lives. And society as a whole, even though the event passes, still carries on the kind of genetic memory of that event. And this is something similar where I think that uh, this act of murder uh, reinforces existing structures of patriarchy and misogyny. And it kind of deepens that relationship. And even though, from my point of view, Saeed... Hanais, uh, Hanais murders weren't the result of any sort of religious conviction. Um, that association and the uh, kind of unconscious or the subtextual misogyny and 
dominance that is kind of like implicit to uh, religion gets reinforced by these acts. And so while they may not have been the root cause, they kind of are beneficiaries of it, that this religious outlook and this misogyny are, are deepened and are amplified by this event. And that's perfectly realized in the ending with the children taking on the lessons of their parents that women are subhuman and men are leaders and heroes and killers. It's a harrowing story. Um, yeah, I yeah I I I'm I have a little bit of qualms about the ending, um, the specific kind of like perspective that we take of Hanai. I kind of understand like emotionally why we fixate so much on on it, but um. It's one of those difficult balances to strike, I think, where this movie wants to be about a lot of things and um, perhaps leaves some perperspectives at the door by uh, courting this perspective of the killer in the end. Um, I think it is a really interesting exploration of female perspectives in the first half of the movie, even if it isn't necessarily characters speaking or describing their conditions. We get to see their conditions, their material conditions, their bodily conditions, how much control they have over their body, over their work, over their comfort. And that changes over in the second half, in my opinion, to a masculine perspective and a different narrative of how this character feels mag like megalomaniacal megalomaniacal and in possession of himself and how he feels like he's exerting control and power and religious devotion and thankfully seeing the dismantling of that belief yeah conservative response that Harold Harold and I is a hero that's crazy I think there, okay, so this is the director speaking. I think there was a psychotic element to the pleasure spe seeking aspects of his murders, the twisted sexuality and whatnot, but there was also this strange innocence about him. It was more about how society creates a serial killer. Okay, cool. So I, I was questioning whether or not um, Abbasi or the film was really stating if his murders came from a place of religious conviction or from um, kind of like sexual or urge to like dominate and i think it has his cake and eats it too on that regard but it, the director is stating that he's aware that the, this was pleasure motivated or control motivated or misogynistically motivated as opposed to solely religiously motivated my intention was not to make a serial killer movie i wanted to make a movie about a ser serial killer society yes i think that was well conveyed it's about deep-rooted misogyny within iranian society which is not specifically religious or political but cultural yeah. Instead of making another movie about different ways men can kill and mutilate women, I, we want to underline the complexity of the issue and the stakes of different sides, especially on the behalf of the victims. Um, yeah. No, kind of agree. Um, I do, yeah. I think my biggest focus on this movie, the thing that I was like attracted to most, is the imagery of the teeth in this movie. I think that was a really powerful showing the degradation of women by the conditions of their teeth, the conditions of their teeth from opium consumption and from um, sexual acts, just uh, them being bruised and battered and constantly vomiting, constantly being unable to take in food. It's just a sickening image. I think that was more powerful than any of the kind of literal or social commentary that the movie was making um i th thought that was a really powerful image yeah that was uh holy spider i think it's worth a watch certainly i, I kind of felt felt like it petered off a little but well worth a watch not really sure that ebrahimi Eb exactly deserved a best actress award for it but i you know it's not hurting anybody that she got it really <laughs> give it a watch apparently there's another movie around the same same time about the same stuff so give killer spider a watch in the meantime, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time, keep watching good movies.